Games Dev, and welcome to another episode on Let's Make a Platformer in Love 2D. So, sorry for the hi hiatus. I've been sick, I've had work, and it's just been really busy. But I'm back, and don't worry, I'm going to keep making videos. I'll never stop with this channel, because I... And just, just like I'll never stop programming. It's a ton of fun. Anyway, so, kicking this off this video, this... I, I want to be able to start making, um, like, writing features and actually creating the game. But before we do that, we need a good infrastructure. And to have a good infrastructure, we have to completely change everything. Now, why do we have to completely change everything? Well, um, right now, our the way we have entities is okay. And honestly, with Lua, it, it makes it a lot better. But um, just for flexibility, we're going to do it like this. So the way we have it right now is we have everything inherit from a... Um, an entity class, right? So everything is part of an entity. Entity, And this is fine, but it means we have to rewrite a lot of code. And if you notice right here, you know how we, uh, how we have, um, hold on. We move this update physics function from the player over to its own uh, physics helper, not physics helper, but its own physics class, right? World physics down here. Well, we did that so that we don't have to rewrite that code. Um, and we could actually take this a whole step further by completely changing the game into an entity component system. So let me talk about what an entity component system. So one of the drawbacks of the system that we have going right now is that everything inherits from an entity. And if you work with programming languages like Java or uh, C++, um, you'll soon find tons of limitations in how hard it actually is to make a game just inheriting from base classes. For instance, let's say you have a gun, which is an entity, and a player that's an entity. And the gun inherits from, um, let's say it inherits from equipable, and equipable inherits from the entity class. And then the player is just inherited from the entity class, um, or inherits from the entity class. Anyway, so it's going to be really hard for the player to talk to the gun, and the gun to talk to the player, because they have, the, it, it takes a lot of pointer magic, and it's just a huge pain. So that's why people develop this way on um, this new thing called uh, an entity component system. So we're going to be implement, uh, implementing that into Lua. So what an entity component system is, is instead think of each entity as more of a container, more of a box. Um, so the player, let's say we're creating a player. We have to think about what components the player will need. So the component needs a physics component so that it can fall, collide with tiles and all that. It's going to need a movement component. It's going to need a drawable component. So basically we just attach these separate components and put it into the player box, essentially. So that way, every single component is exactly the same object, and all we have to do is have a factory that creates an, an entity, inserts all the components we want into the box, into the entity, and then returns that entity. So essentially, there's going to be no game logic in the entity class. because There's only going to be game logic in each component. Um, and this component design, normally, they'll create separate systems, like they want to separate the logic from the initialization code. But I'm actually going to do it differently in this video. I'm going to actually have the logic in each component. So entity. Uh, uh, anyway, this is this is pretty complicated just to explain, and this is getting really way too long. So I'm just going to get started. So um, we're going to create a new class called an entity container. Um, so let's do that real quick. So this is going to be the entity that contains all our components, and every single. Um, uh, what am I doing? Entity. Container. Sorry. When I get talking, sometimes I type what I talk. Um, so this is going to contain. Um, this is going to be what every single entity is. It's just going to be a container, and it's going to be really simple. Um, so let's make a function, ec new, and we're going to pass in an ID, and that's the only thing we're going to pass in. Um, so right here, we're going to create. We're just going to return a table, and I'm going to be doing it this style. A lot of people don't like this style because it is. It's a little bit uglier, but it's just, it's really simple and I like it. So we're going to make a table called components and then a number t another table con named component ID, um, component IDs. All right, and then we're also going to set our ID to the passed in ID or entity. So if the idea is, if we forget to pass an ID, it will automatically give it the ID of entity. Um, next, we're going to make a function. We're going to name this add component. And we're going to make it, it's going to be a function. Um, whoops. We're going to pass in itself. We're going to pass in the ID of the component. We're going to pass in the component itself. And then also arguments, which is a table. 
and that's how we can actually interface with the with the um, component. So here we're gonna say components uh, component dot init inner pass and self. Now the reason why we don't do this is that this would actually insert the component into here. Um, we don't want to insert the component into the self right here. We want to insert the actual entity itself right there. So component dot self um, init dot self. Okay. Um, and then in the init, we're also going to pass in args. Right here, we're going to say self dot components um, id is equal to component. We're going to use a uh, a map for right now. Um, and then table dot insert um, component ids. Oh shoot, id. And that's how we're actually going to um, be able to index it. So tick. We're going to add it to the game loop. So tick is equal to function. Now I'm getting, I'm really bad at typing right now. I don't know what it is. Self. I'm actually reading the notes on the side because this is pretty complicated. Um, in here, we're going to loop through all the, uh, all the components and tick and, uh, draw them. We're going to do the same for, or update them. And then we're also going to do the same here. Um, I'm going to make some, a couple functions that we will overwrite in the future. Like I said that we wouldn't have any, um, logic in the actual class and I kind of want to change that um, so that you'll have a little bit of logic just because we can like in Lua you you have a lot of flexibility so I want to use that to our advantage and like I said technically we really don't need this because a lot of the issues that the uh, um, that C++ and Java have with normal um, inheritance and all that is you know being able to interface with the other objects because they're all different you know all so but since lua thinks everything's the same and you don't really have to worry about that it's not as big a deal but there's also really good benefits to the entity component system so here we're going to call load um so that's why we uh we're actually going to add this in it's just it's it makes a lot cleaner code um one of my biggest uh Oh, what, what am I going to say? One of my biggest philosophies for programming is never um, rewrite code, you know, or at least try never to rewrite code. If you write the same code over and over again, then you're doing something wrong. Um, and I feel like that's the uh, that's the philosophy of a, a lot of programmers. So that's it, guys. That's our whole component system. Actually, no, it's not. Let me implement this. So for i is equal to one um, number of self dot components do uh, component IDs actually component IDs and then we're gonna say self dot components uh, self dot component IDs I dot uh, tick and then we're gonna pass in self remember don't use a colon to pass in self use self itself um, use the uh, the entity self I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but basically it's just passing on the entity so that we don't um, we don't mess with the component. We don't add, the component doesn't have any other variables. It doesn't attach anything to itself. It attaches it to the object. Um, then we're gonna call it self dot tick or actually update. I like the update a little. It's a little bit cleaner. And we're actually just gonna copy this. You know, he's not supposed to copy code, but whatever. Uh, so that uh, draw, and then we're gonna call render, just like that. Um, and that should be it. Let me look over my notes. Is that it? That is it. All right. So the next thing we're gonna add is an entity. We're gonna actually we're gonna create a simple component. So a component is just a very simple object. Um, until we add, um, until we add logic to it. But for now, I'm just going to make a simple rectangle, um, and we're going to make a folder called components. We're going to name C rectangle dot Lua. Um, we're going to prefix every single one of our objects with a C underscore. Um, let's do this local. Here, let me look at my notes. Uh, C rectangle is equal to a table. Return C rectangle. It's just going to be like every other class that we that we've created. Um, function. That was not function. There we go. C rectangle new. Um, in the new, we're not going to pass in anything. Because remember, we passed in the arguments into the uh, init function. 
So next we're going to create the init function. So rect init, we're going to say um, args. And args is just going to be a table. It's not going to, it's just going to be a, a simple array. Yeah, array of numbers or strings or whatever the poop you want. So we're going to say one or zero. We're going to copy this four times. We're going to say y, two or zero, three, four, um, with height, we could use our vector class, but this is just, this is just a test. This class right here is just a test. Um, okay, so next we have to init our tick function, rect tick, and, and then function rect draw, and we're actually going to implement this draw class. So in this draw class, we're just going to draw a simple rectangle. So love.graphics dot uh, rectangle uh, we're gonna fill we're gonna say self dot x self dot y self dot width and self dot height that actually rhymes if you say it fast enough and that's it so how are we gonna create these entities and um, actually assemble them um, well we're gonna be using something called a entity factory so let's create an entity factory in our tools um, in here we're just going to say local entity factory, just going to be a simple module. And I like simplicity, that's why I do it like this, instead of creating like a class, um, like a class higher, like using uh, meta tables and all that, I just like, I like simplicity, it's easier to read. Um, so right now we're going to add, um, require our entity container, so objects, uh, forward slash entity container. Container. There we go. Um, function uh, entity factory new rectangle. So this is how we're gonna interface it. So we're gonna say x y with height. So this is how we're gonna create it, I should say. So we're gonna say local um, ent is equal to ec new. Um, then we just pass in a argument like the id. Return the entity. So now let's attach some components to it. So let's uh, let's actually include the, no, let's do it like this. We're actually gonna not do it like this in the future, but I'm just gonna do it for simplicity's sake. So ent.add component, compo uh, ent. We're gonna pass in the ID of rect. We're gonna require the component, and this is what I'm talking about. We're actually gonna, um, Oh shoot, no. We're actually gonna include this up here, but for now we're just gonna do it down here. Sorry if I'm not talking, by the way, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, objects, forward slash, uh, components. Just like that, forward slash, uh, C underscore rectangle. All right, I'm gonna say new. Then over here, we're going to pass in the arguments. So we're just going to create a rectangle at 128, 128, and it's going to be 128 by 128. So that's what we pass in the arguments right there. Um, we could pass in, actually, let's do this. Uh, this is way smarter. I didn't do this in the notes. I don't know why I didn't. Just like that. Okay. So that's it. So now if we go into a main, let's create our entity and let's try this out. So let's get a local ref no, a global reference to the uh, entity factory. My voice just totally gave up there. <laughs> a little bit embarrassing, but whatever. It happens to all of us. I'm still a teenager. I'm still, still growing. All right. Uh, entity factory. Uh, let's look. Create a local rectangle. Hopefully, we don't have any errors. If I can nail this out of the bar, uh, ballpark the first time. Of course, we're not. I'm not going to, but. Okay, so what do we need for this x, y with height? So I'm going to do 128, 128, 128 by 128. Just so we can very clearly see a giant white rectangle. And then we're also going to call rectangle.init. Um, later, we're going to create a entity manager that will automatically call the init function. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. So let's build it. And uh, of course, we got errors. So entity container 7. Uh, go to seven. Oh, let's make sure we add 
these commas. Let's make sure I do that all the way down. So after the end, all the way down. Okay, that should be good. Call method rectangle. Main 39. Um, new rectangle. Whoa. Uh -oh. So we just got a bad require. Um, rect angle. There we go. Rectangle. No. Components forward slash. C rectangle. Let me copy this. Uh, where am I? There we go. That's not a drawing. Objects. Components. Really? Entity factory eight. Um, I'll be right back and figure out what's going on, and then I'll see you guys later. So just a second. I am back, and I figured out what the problem was, and I do this a lot. I, I actually accidentally named my folder components.lua. Um, whoops, so let me try that. Uh, attempt to load component. Cont entity container uh, 12. Let's see what's up. Component, component. Um, okay, so it goes self, id, and then args. Uh, component then args. So let's go to the entity factory. So um, ID, uh, there's self in, um, inserted by the colon, our new. So let's make sure that we're actually returning it in the rectangle, which we are not. So let's return the rectangle. Build. Oh my word. <laughs> Table expected got nil. Okay, so entity container 14. 14. Well, we need, to, we need to say self.components. There we go, guys. You, you can now see. I also... Oh, actually, I didn't do this. Let's slow down the player a little bit. He's just way too fast. I, I made him that fast just for uh, testing purposes. Um, let me rebuild this. But anyway, you can see a rectangle right now. And that was created by a component, and it's awesome. And if we gave it like a physics component in the future... It should be able to jump, fall, blah, 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 and a ton of things. So in the future, we're just going to be making components instead of actually creating entities that do things. We're just going to make components. Um, that way, we can attach, we, we can attach. let's say we want to give an ent enemy a bow or something. We can get, uh, just attach the bow component to like 10 different en entities if we want, different entities. So if we want a skeleton to have a bow, if we want a, I don't know, or archer or whatever to have a bow, blah, 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 you know, we can do that. Um, so anyway, so that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. The rectangle class is just a temporary one. We're going to be creating modules for physics, for guns, for bullet physics, everything. Um, anyway, so this is just the main architecture. So yeah, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.